Do you ever feel like you're falling from an unimaginable height? And it was so real that you could feel the fear in your gut and the wind on your face, and all you could think is that you're going to die. But then panting, you open your eyes wide, only to realize that it was a dream all along. Do you ever wonder that if not science, what else could be the meaning of all the dreams? Or maybe the dreams are delivered to you. Well, even if you don't have a theory about this, the ancient Greeks obviously did. According to Greek mythology, Morpheus, the god of dreams, was known to formulate the dreams of humans, and he could do so in any shape and could even take up any form in their dreams to deliver them the naked truth or create a false alarm in their slumber. The name itself describes the work of this artist as morph, which means shape or form. And before we begin unraveling his dreamy story, we want you to know that you can support and help this channel grow just by checking out the product links in the description. Who knows, you might find your perfect merch. So do give it a glance. Now, let's just straight away dive into a glorious state of trance, shall we? Morpheus was the son of the personification of sleep, Hypnos and Pasithea, the goddess of relaxation, meditation, hallucinations, and all other altered states of consciousness. He was part of the Onori, who were the dream spirits, and his brothers as well. He was the one who led Onori and had the skill to influence the dreams of gods, kings, and heroes while the rest of the troops could take care of the rest of mankind. Though Morpheus could take any form or shape, his true form was considered to be a winged demon. His brothers included Phantasus, who created fake illusional dreams by mimicking any inanimate or non-living objects, Ikalos, who formed true dreams and made them more realistic, and Phobator, the Greek god of nightmares, who scared people by using the forms of animals in his dreams. The family of these musketeers was considered to be ruling over the whole world of sleep. Morpheus's residence was believed to be in Erebus, the underworld which was guarded by monsters that showed the worst nightmares one could imagine in the uninvited people. The land of dreams had two gates, one made of ivory and associated with a deception that could steer men in the wrong direction, and the other was made up of horns that resembled truth and gave prophetic dreams that were sent by the gods and always proved true. All right, example-based crossover time! If by any chance you have read or watched Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, there was a mirror of Erised that showed the perceiver what the heart desires the most, and Dumbledore asks Harry to not dwell on dreams, but rather live in the reality. This statement here has depth in it, because it describes how dangerous it is to dwell on dreams, as Morpheus had the power to develop false hopes in the sleeping mind and could use them against you. So there is a story here as well. In the Iliad, once what Morpheus, on the order of Zeus, was sent to Agamemnon. Now the Iliad describes the Trojan War, where at a certain point Zeus wanted to shower the glory on Achilles, for which Agamemnon had to suffer an embarrassing defeat. So for this to happen, Morpheus delivered a false dream of hope to Agamemnon, and he prompted him to follow a messed up strategy which he actually did follow, and was defeated in a humiliating way. But how? It was because Zeus, through Morpheus, made Agamemnon believe that he was on his side, as a result of which many soldiers of Agamemnon were killed and he was at a loss. Now, although he was not named in this story, people consider that it was Morpheus who was the unnamed spirit here. There was another myth, this time of Sakes and Alcyone, and this myth talks about a jubilant couple descending towards a tragedy, the favorite genre of Greek mythology. So this couple was so deeply devoted to one another and so in love that they used to refer to each other affectionately as Zeus and Hera. This way of addressing each other no doubt offended Zeus and he decided to make them pay. Why? Well, obviously because they used the names of the king and queen of gods and his pride couldn't digest the fact that he was pissed that the man tried to link himself with the Almighty. So Zeus waited for the right moment and finally one day he got his chance. It was when Sakes decided to go on a sea voyage, and no matter how much Alcyone pleaded to accompany him, he refused as the voyage would be a dangerous one and he couldn't risk the life of his beloved. Alcyone had a bad feeling about the trip and even tried to stop Sakes, but he still decided to continue the journey. On his way at the sea, Zeus sent a ruthless storm and wiped out the existence of Sakes as he drowned. Before he died, he prayed to the gods that he wants his body to be passed onto the shore where his wife could find him and bury him by following the rituals as the ancient Greeks believed that the afterlife would not be attained by their souls if they were not buried properly. Hera heard his prayers and pitying the lover, she fetched for Morpheus to do her bidding. 
she called upon the goddess of rainbow, Iris, to send a message inviting Morpheus so that he could visit the dreams of the wife and tell her about the death and the last wish of her soulmate. The myth of Iris waking up Morpheus to deliver the message as per the command given to her caught the eyes of the artistic population who created beautiful pieces on the scene. Morpheus took the ghost form of Sakes, which was deathly pale and naked, and stood beside her wife's bed and told the tale of the tragedy, weeping and asking her to throw aside all the hope she had of him being alive. Alcyone tried to embrace Morpheus, the ghostly form of Sakes, but he faded away and she could only hug the air. She raced to the shore and found the body of her husband. Not being able to accept the death of her better half, she drowned herself in the ocean as well. On seeing this raw form of love, Zeus felt guilty and decided to turn both the lovers into a pair of kingfishers. This means that Morpheus was also a messenger of God along with all the cool powers that he possessed, and along with the attention of artisans also had the attention of the literary people. And we can say so because the influence of his bittersweet dreams and terrible nightmares are echoed in the literary section. One of the examples is The Tempest by Shakespeare, who expresses in the poem his longing for the peacefulness of dreams and sleep. Now, before we end this video, here's another interesting fact we've dug up for you. So actually, Morpheus was the god who slept the most and he resided in a cave that was filled with poppy seeds. The ancient Greeks used poppy seeds as painkillers, but with a side effect that led to extreme drowsiness. So now it is believed that when the drug morphine was discovered and created, it was named after the god Morpheus to indicate its sleep-inducing features of it. Well, with this, we know that as the bringer of dreams in Greek mythology, Morpheus brought hope and despair, terror and peace to the dreaming souls. So is it just us, or will all of you now think of Morpheus and feel that every dream of yours is a sign and is indicating something to you? Please do let us know in the comments section below, and while you're at it, also write about the weird dreams you've had and felt that it was an act of God, or maybe the dream was asking you to do something. Lastly, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such amazing videos. See you next time. Yours, Mythically.